um, it was literally just a normal day, like, or just every other day. And I don't know, we were both contemplating whether to go football or not. Was it? I was feeling lazy, like, we were both just feeling lazy, but I think he wanted to go slightly more than I did, but yeah. And we spoke to a few other people, like, no one really wanted to go, like, it was just just a normal day, but just, yeah, everyone's quite lazy. Um, and coming to the end of the day, well, I just decided, why not? Because he kept pestering me the whole day. I thought, why not? Yeah, yeah I remember everyone he, ended up going then, didn't it? Yeah. And he had no boots to play with, so... Oh, yeah, he, he, was, he kept on asking yeah. me, oh, can I have your boots, can I have your boots? And me, I'm just a hygiene sort of person, so I was like, nah, you can't have my boots. Yeah, I did. I so, but surprisingly, like, me, me and Philip, we always used to argue around, like, petty things and stuff like that, yeah. But this, like, for some reason, this day, when he asked for my boots and I said no, he just smiled at me and walked away. So I mean, like, it's one of those things I could never really forgive myself if he, if he, if we did fall into an argument and that happened. Yeah, you, usually he would be, he would pester like, like, oh, why, yeah, why are you not giving me your boots? Like, but just, <laughs> I don't know. It seemed normal, but I didn't realize we didn't. None of us realized all these little, little manu things like that was yeah. going on for the day. But only until a few days after yeah. we really noticed what had actually happened. Like, and then actually, the yeah, actually coming to football. Well, I came late anyway, so the match already started. Like, there was already kick about between year 13, year 12, no year. Sixth form and year 11, and then join on the pitch. It was just, yeah, it was just a normal game, really. But, um, like, after it actually happened, like, no one actually realized the severity of, like, like how, ser how serious it actually was, in it? So, yeah, I remember running up to him, and because uh, it had a similar thing with my brother, but it weren't so severe to the point of what happened. But, um, I remember his arm was a bit bent back, and I remember saying to everyone, Oh, don't worry, don't worry, it's fine, it's just a seizure, everyone back up, and no one really realized how bad it was actually going to be bad. At first I thought it was a joke, like I thought you were just playing about like why are you on the floor? So everyone, yeah, same, everyone same. was laughing like, like think about it, it was just... Because uh, it was making that same noise the whole yeah, match, innit? Yeah, everyone, and everyone was laughing like, oh, why is he on the floor? It, it just seemed like he was joking, but yeah, we went up to him. And then we all, I remember we all had to get um, get cleared off the pitch, we went into the goals waiting room, like the goals um, hall area. Um, and no one really knew what to think, really. it, was quite, it was quite silent, it was quite dull. Yeah, literally, the only point that we realised how bad everything was, was when I remember specifically Miss Fewer, she stood in the viewpoint of the glass window and just behind her I saw them carrying him. And from then I just knew it was bad, I just left the room, chased yeah, the ambulance and went to hospital. Um, what happened on the 5th of February? Think about 2.20. I can't remember precisely the time. I was at home when I got a phone call from Philip's school and um, asking me to come to school. And the person that was speaking to me on the phone that there was Philip's best friend. Um, he lives just two, two straight away from us. He's, I've known him since Philip was about six or five years old, they've always been together. So he called me, and he's the one that I normally call whenever Philip uh, don't come back from school in time. So when he called, I've, I, known he, I know his voice like a new Philip voice, because I always speak to him on the phone. So when he called, he was crying on the phone, and he said I should come to school quickly because Philip was playing football on him, and he collapsed. But because he was crying, I wasn't too sure, and I asked him, I said, is he all right? And he, he, he tried to hide it away from me, he said, yeah, he's all right. I said, is he breathing? And, and he, he was mumbling with his uh, words. I said, okay, I'll make my way straight uh, to school. And on my way, I think about 10 minutes away from the school, I got another phone call again. This time around, it was a teacher. And he said, oh, Mrs. Lamin, uh, you can start making your way straight to, um, to the hospital because Philip's situation has gotten a little bit serious and they had to, the ambulance had to take him to the hospital. Then I started to panic, I started to worry. I said, oh, from him collapsing in the school to not rushing with an ambulance to school, it was a bit serious. So I, I told the taxi driver that was bringing me to school to now head straight to Queen Elizabeth Hospital. So while I was in the, uh, in the taxi coming to school, I made a phone call, I called his dad, called Philip dad, because Philip dad lived in Spain. I called his dad, I called my family, I called my pastor and all my friends. I said, look, I've just got a news and I'm a bit worried if they could pray for me uh, because I'm really scared and I'm worried. I said Philip was playing football, he collapsed, I was going to school and now they said I should go to the hospital. I'm a bit scared and they should pray for me. 
So on getting to the hospital, they just, um, as soon as I went into the reception and said, uh, I'm Mrs. Lamy, I'm Philip Mom, oh, everybody was just, everybody in the hospital just stood still and they were looking at me. Some of them were crying. As soon as I saw them crying, oh, my heart started beating myself. So I went in and they took me to where Philip was lying down. And I saw a lot of doctors there attending to him, tube all over his mouth and his nose. They were pressing his chest and blood was coming out. I became scared. I couldn't stand the scene that I was seeing because I've never ever seen my son like that. So when I saw the scene, it was too scary for me to go in. So I asked him to give me a room that I wanted to be on my own first of all, just to gather myself before I go back. So the nurses or the staff, they gave me one a room and I went in there as um, I'm a Christian. So I started praying and asking God to help me and to help my son. I stood there, I, I, I knelt down there for half an hour. After praying, I went back into the room again and the doctors were still doing what they were doing. And I asked them how, how far, they said, Mrs. Lamy, uh, things are not looking all right. I said uh, that they needed to stop what they were doing and I said, please continue, don't stop. And I went back again to the same room uh, to just gather myself again. And I came back the last time and they said, look, we have to stop. We just have to stop now because what we're doing is not going to change anything. And they stopped and they pronounced my son dead at that particular. As soon as I said my son was dead, I said, how, how is that possible? My son left home this morning. He was all right. He was bubbly. He was laughing. Everything was all right. How can my son pass away? So I think I was dazed. As soon as I pronounced him dead right in my presence, I was kind of completely dazed. So I just, I didn't know when I ran into the main, to the motorway and lie down on the motorway, wanting cars to just come and run me down so that I could join my son, you know. It was a very, very challenging experience for me. So the, somebody came into the motorway and stopped all the cars from moving so that the car don't run me over. And they brought me back again to the hospital to sit down. And by the time I got back to the hospital, all my families and my friends were all gathering. <clears throat> Some of Philip's few friends were all there. So were just gathering and looking at me and I was looking at them. I said, this can't be possible. This cannot be possible. How, why, when, what? You know, I just asked myself, 1001 question at the same time that my son just left home this morning and he's never going to come back again so we stayed in the hospital till about I think about 10 o'clock and they asked the, when the nurses or uh, the staff of the hospital said we have to go home now and then come back the following day uh, that Philip was going to be taken to the mortuary I said what? This is not possible so we went back home and when we got back home the whole of my street was packed up with um, people from my community, from people who have, uh, I think the, the news of his passing away kind of leaked through the social media. So all of his friends were gathering in my house, in the street, and, um, and that was it. That was what happened on the 5th of February. Yeah, um, and that was the particular spot, that very spot. I think I came after the 5th of February from the hospital, the 6th of February, <clears throat> I came to school where the, the school had um, a kind of um, remembrance uh, for him and I was invited to come and I came in and I asked them to take me to where it all happened and they brought me that particular spot there, right there. And I, when I came in, I just looked at the place and I lied down, I lay myself down on that ground uh, just to feel my son's, uh, uh, just to feel him, you know. Uh, so, so that was what happened. Oh, um, I've known I've known Philip for quite a while. Like from before secondary school, like we went way back uh, to Belvedere. Where we used to play in a cage, and that's where like olders, youngers, we used to just go there and play football. And Philip really loved football, so I guess that's the way we sort of met up. Um, yeah, like we had good times, but no, nah, we had like proper good times. Like it was fun and all this. But the only time, the time where we got really close together was when we came to secondary school. And I remember the first day. Like he came to knock for me because we were planning to go together and because I was taking long and long and long to get ready I remember I had some do you not remember my high my shoes the high tops yeah, just space boots in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was so, and I was trying to get them on and I was trying to do all these things so fast so fast but I, I guess I just took long I'm just a long guy like that and I remember making us late and then on that day this guy just aired me the whole day literally did not speak to me because I made him late but um, yeah our relationship was actually it was, it was real close yeah.
My relationship with Philip, apart from being his mom, was a great one. Me and Philip had a fantastic relationship up till, the, up till his passing away. Philip was a very good child to me. He was very caring, very loving. Uh, <laughs> I always remember every Mother's Day, he would buy me a box of chocolate and he makes sure he buys the one that he likes. So in the morning, he would come to my room on the day of the Mother's Day, he would come to my room and it would bring me a candle and a cup of tea and my box of chocolate and when I open it I find out that all the ones that he likes he's taking them out and eating them already <laughs> before presenting me with the ones that he didn't like but that was love and then when I asked him I said Philip I thought this chocolate is for me and he said yes mom is for you but we're sharing the love you know <laughs> so he's been a very very good child very very caring and um, even though he was my son he has a wisdom. He always teaches me things, especially with my English, because I speak several languages. So sometimes I, I get caught up with my uh, my pronunciation, pronunciation or whatever. <laughs> so he will come back from school. The first thing he does is he will pick a word from school and come back. As soon as he get come into the room, he come. He say, "Mom, come here, come here." He say, "Pronounce this word," and I'll pronounce it. And he will start laughing. He say, "Mom, you just speak like an fob." I said, <laughs> and we just start laughing. PL9 is um, actually is Philip. Philip and um, uh, P is for Philip. L is for Lamin, and nine is the number nine T-shirts that he uses for his football. After Philip passing away, I think the tenth of May. On the 10th of May, we started a forum in his memory. The reason I started that forum was because um, after the passing away of Philip, he, a lot of his friends were coming to my house. They just kind of gather in my house. Uh, they come every day, uh, just come and relax in my house. And um, the numbers were growing by the week. And um, what we do when they come in, we just kind of sit down and talk about Philip and just laugh about Philip. Sometimes we cry. Um, so they were coming in their numbers every week and I found out that the numbers were growing in the week by week and I thought hmm, this is not very, I, I was worried for my neighbors because the majority of his friends are six feet, six foot tall, you know, and sometimes I get about 20, 25 of them coming into the house and I, you can imagine what the neighbors would be thinking. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to move it from my house. Um, to the public place. So I went to Nando's to ask them if they could give us a place for us to meet on a weekly basis just for me to be around the young people and, and, and just listen to them and can help them counsel and help to counsel them through their grieving as well. And um, because when Philip passed away, when I see these young boys, it's like Philip is among them and when they see me, they feel like Philip is still around. So we kind of uh, encourage one another through the, the sweet stories and the sad story and the reason for PL9 is for me to be able to counsel the young people so that they can grieve positive. A few years ago I used to play football, like I love football, I always wanted to play football my life, like I used to play for Chan Academy from the age of 10 until I was 15. When I was 15 like around June time, I was sitting in class and then I just started feeling like a pain in my chest without warning, so like there was no symptoms or anything and then the next minute all I knew was I was on the floor and with me I couldn't speak and I couldn't breathe so I was basically going in and out, in and out, in and out and there was nothing I could do basically because even were like, just imagine being on the floor not being able to speak like say tell people what's going on and anything so I was scared myself and I thought that was it because like I thought that was it because not being able to speak breathe or anything I thought my life was over but then they called the ambulance and everything and the ambulance came down and then I passed out the next minute I woke up in the hospital and when I woke up all I could see was like my dad was just crying like even thinking about it now it just brings tears to my eyes my dad was just crying and when I woke up I just all I saw was cables on my arms and everything so for me it was, it was like I still couldn't speak so I really didn't know what was going on I could still feel the pain in my chest so I was wondering like am I alive am I dead because I thought for my dad to be crying I thought that was it maybe it's just my spirit like I'm dead now but then when I woke up and I could finally speak 
it was like a huge relief basically and then my dad I just saw my dad holding my hand just telling me everything's gonna be okay and all I can remember just hearing a voice saying you're not dying today that's all I can remember hearing a voice saying like you're not dying today and for me that that moment ever since that voice I still hear it sometimes today I just feel that I'm so blessed to be alive today because there's so many people considering what happened to Philip that like, there's so many people that when they have heart things like that like not everyone can make it for me it's like I knew I have a purpose from when I was a little boy my mum always told me I had a purpose in the world and so I knew that there's no way I could die without fulfilling that purpose and so like after that a few months later I got back on my feet but sadly doctors told me I couldn't play football anymore and my dream was crushed because football was my life it was all I ever wanted to do in my life so when they told me I couldn't play football anymore it felt like you know it ripped, basically ripped out my ripped my heart out of my chest basically because I thought that was it but then it wasn't it because then I found acting and comedy and music and so it's basically God basically God's way of telling me I have a new plan for you because you know I believe that God knows best like God has a plan he has a reason for everything and maybe his reason for me having that heart problem was for me to be able to go on to new things and leading on to PL9 because I never knew what PL9 was until last year when Auntie when Miss Juliet messaged me on Facebook telling me to perform at a concert at Bexley Heath um, School which is just around the corner and so just from that moment there it's like it felt right from the moment we got into contact she even told me that it was God that brought her to me you know so I knew that God was working here like it wasn't just out of order, it was just something God was working here between us so when I performed at the concert I done my show it was brilliant and then after a few days later she told me that she wanted me to be the leader of PL9 and straight away I didn't even have to ask any questions I knew that it was for me Defibrillator is a device that helps shock people's heart back to life whenever they have a cardiac uh, related issue. I think I was told that if there's a defib in a school or in any public area where somebody have a heart attack, if within five minutes if you could get a defib then there's a chance that that person is going to survive. But without the defib, there's a very slim chance for survival. So the uh, reason I'm very passionate about, about doing this interview with you today is um, since my son passed away on the 5th of February 2013 in this particular spot, I've been doing a lot of campaigning to make sure that every school in the Bexley Borough and every public area has a defib. The reason why we should have a defib is because it's just like a fire extinguisher. When you go to public places, you see fire extinguisher in every public places or in schools. Why do we put it there? We don't put it there because we expect fires to happen any moment, but we put it there, should, in case fire happen, then there is a fire extinguisher to be able to quench the fire. And that's what DFIB should be, and that's why I'm campaigning for every school. First of all, in the Bexley Borough to have a DFIB in the school and every public in, and then move on to every other public places and so far we've been able to um, achieve that goal in the Bexley Borough. What I would like to tell everybody today, especially those who are uh, watching this documentary, especially parents as well, is to please make sure they take their children, their young boys or girls, for heart screening if it's possible. And um, I don't have the website with me, but there's a charity called Cry. I think if they Google it, they will see it. It's called Cry. They organize heart screening for young people between the age of 14 to 20, uh, between the age of 14 to 24, 23, every now and again. So if they go through that website and, and see when the next heart screening is, they, they can take their children for heart screening. Why do they have to do the heart screening? They do the heart screening because if any young person have a heart defect, they will know beforehand at least 
get the medical help or attention before anything seriously like Philip happened. I wish I had somebody who did this kind of campaign when, 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 when before Philip passed away because I knew Philip was into football. If I had seen any, of, any campaign like this beforehand, I would have taken Philip or encouraged Philip to go and have it hard screen because I know he's into sport. But unfortunately, I didn't get any of this... Um, um, campaign going on at the time where I lost my son. So that is why I want to encourage every parent whose children are into sport to please take their children for high screening before any casualty, seriously, as my son uh, uh, situation happened. Like they always say, to be safe is better than to be sorry.